Ladies and gentlemen, here as promised is my Liverpool FC career mode on Football Manager 2017 year in review. Hey, how you doing? Hope well. Hope, hope you're having a good day because uh, we're going to get into some good Football Manager action. My goal was to take LFC from an upper mid-range team to title contenders and even possibly winners. It wasn't the easiest of tasks at times. I had my moments of utter failure as well as times of sheer brilliance. In the end, how did we do? Well, ladies and gents, you can see it on the screen, but we won the league. First place by 10 points. What the hell? So let's start this story off with... Moise Keane from Juventus, 1.2 mil to 1.7 mil future fees and all that. This is all in euros, by the way. Uh, mainly, he stayed down in the under-23s and did okay with some great performances here and there. But the rest of the time, he was kind of mediocre. He, maybe it's because he was, you know, a young kid in an older league, but, you know, that we'll see. I may move him down to the under-18s uh, next season, but we'll see. You know, he's definitely a rising star. In about two years, I would say he's, he's definitely going to be in and around the first team, no questions asked. Uh, but you'll see two appearances, 6.65 rating, not the greatest for the Prem. Uh, under 23s, but 12 apps, 12 goals, 1 assist, 7.18 rating. So, you know, maybe he's better than I, I was thinking he was. But every time I saw him, he kind of, you know, or, or heard or saw his uh, reviews, he just, he wasn't stellar all the time. Saidi Janko is coming in from Celtic. He is on loan right now at, Bur- at Barnsley. And he's coming in for about a million dollars, a million pounds, a million euro. Uh, he's definitely one for the future. He doesn't come in till this summer, 2017. And to be honest, I bought him knowing he wouldn't be coming in anytime soon. But I saw that he had, you know, the scouts were saying he had loads of potential. So I brought him in for a fairly cheap fee. But then I kind of forgot about him during the season. So, you know, this is kind of my first time looking at him again. Skybet Championship, 21 appearances, one goal, four assists. 6.82 rating. Um, so, you know, he's definitely one for the future. Uh, we'll see how he progresses next year. He'll go, you know, into the under 23s. Uh, he's only 21 right now, so we'll see how he does. Reese Oxford. He was brought in from West Ham for 10 million. His contract, when he came in, only stipulated that he would play in the cup games, so he spent most of his time in the under 23s with a couple of Premier League games scattered about. But he did excel in the cup games and the few games that he came on for the league. Definitely would let, we'll see more first team action next season as I'll probably shift Sacco on and maybe one other, but we'll see. Uh, so he's definitely going to get some game time next season. So three appearances, 7.2 rating. Uh, let's see, the under 23s, group one, 14 appearances, 6.9. Yeah. But he, he did very well in the Premier League games that he started or he played in. So he's definitely going to get some game time next season. Pedrag Rajkovic is one of those wonder kids. Maccabi Tel Aviv brought in for 5.25 million, going up to 6.25. He was loaned back to the club, unfortunately, but loads of potential. Definitely a keeper for the future. I'm thinking kind of selling either Minule or Karius and having Pedrag as my number two. My other option is to sell Minule and Karius and get Donnarumma in. I don't know how much he's going to cost in the season, in the second season, but and have him and, and Rajkovic do, uh, doing the duo and then bring in a, yother, a younger keeper or keep Danny Ward around uh, and see what happens. But you can see in, let's see, he was playing in the Euro, so 15 appearances, 7.24 rating. Uh, is the Israel Premier League, 29 appearances with a 6.91, so he's not doing any better than Karius, but still, loads of potential. Look at that, he's, you know, potential of upwards of four and a half stars. Um, and that's just my scout saying, so he could be more. Next up, we have Andrea Bellotti from Torino. 23 million down, 24 and a half million up, uh, up to. This dude turned out to be way too inconsistent. It was amazing how inconsistent this guy was. When he scored, his ratings were through the roof, 8 to almost 10 easily. But if he didn't score, then his average was at best 7.4, uh, 6.4 to 6.7 or, or thereabouts. He's a very frustrating player. I really don't think I'm using him correctly in the tactics, so I'm probably going to have to redo that next season just to better suit his attributes, but that can also be said for many of the other players. I don't know if you know the players that didn't get 
good ratings, if that's because of the, the tactics or whatever. But everyone says on Football Manager that this guy is an absolute beast. He And his look at his stats. His stats are terrific. But I just don't think I got the best out of him. So we'll see what happens next season with him. And then next, we have Kene Tete. As you know, I always need a, a DRDL on the bench. Uh, it needs to have the both roles just in case one or the other... Uh, in the starting lineup, get you know have to has to be brought out. So he fit the bill fairly perfectly. He's not uh, green. I'll take. He's not the greatest as a as a DL, but he's competent. Definitely more of a DR uh, type player. He won't be ousting Klein for the DL spot anytime soon. Of course, unless Klein needs a rest. But he was absolutely solid. You know, eight point four, seven point two, six eight. This uh, he was very good. And he still has loads of potential so that when Klein either gets sold off or decreases in stats, then he can take over full time. 7 started, 14 uh, subs, 7.23 rating, was a fantastic backup, no question about it. Mauricio Lemos had a handful of games, some cup games and more under 23 games, and excelled at most of it. Like Oxford, I really fit. I really need to fit him into the season next, into the team next year, and I'm thinking of a four center back team with Murillo, Matip, Oxford, and Lemos, but, you know, we'll see. So, Premier, five appearances, starting seven from the bench, 7.21 rating, FA Cup, 7.7 rating. Uh, definitely did a good job. Needs to be brought into the first team next season. Jose Gaia. This dude is a beast. In 23 games started, he averaged 7.58 rating, got four goals and five assists. Absolutely terrific purchase. Worth every penny. No question about it. However, while a terrific signing, he really kind of wasn't needed. I wasn't thinking much about how Football Manager would play the game. Instead, I was kind of thinking of the real-world situation. And in Liverpool, the real-world situ- real world situation is that Moreno just isn't good enough. I was a huge Moreno fan, but the past co- you know the past couple of seasons, he just has not been good enough, and I, it needs to change. So with that, I brought in Gaia. And again, he's been absolutely a beast mode. You know, he's a terrific player in this game. However, like I said, while a terrific signing, he really wasn't needed. Moreno is absolutely amazing in this game. And maybe not amazing, but he's a terrific player in this game. So you'll see Moreno, 15 appearances started, 5 off the bench, 1 goal, 2 assists, player of the match 1, 7.37 rating. The FA Cup, four, uh, four games started, one goal, 8.05 rating. So Moreno really is good in this game. And while he's not the greatest in real life, he is here. And uh, if I just hadn't, you know, if I hadn't gotten Gaia, still would have had a terrific left back and have saved 28 to 34 million. Jason Murillo. Inter Milan, 21 million, 24 million upwards. Uh, This was a transfer deadline day purchase. Wasn't sure if I needed another defender and was testing the waters, and in the end, I just pulled the trigger and brought him in. I figured better to have too many center backs than too few. Earlier in the season, he was terrific. However, later on, mostly the last 10 or so games, he really started falling off. Bad passes back to the keeper that would turn into opposition goals or even carious errors. And he'll get rotation spot next year, but not guaranteed first team, especially with Oxford and Lamos doing so well. Uh, Guess I probably should have just left him at Inter, but, you know, what's done is done. He's in the team. You'll see 22 games started, four off the bench, one goal, two assists, 7.18 rating. Not bad. Uh, FA Cup, four, started 7.8 rating. I mean, he's, he's definitely a very good player. Uh, I wish he was more more consistent. You'll see his all of his stats just seem to be going down for some reason, but uh, hopefully we can sort that out next season. Next up, Maximiliano Romero. Oh, I can't get this dude a work permit to save my effing life. And I'm starting to get worried, to be honest, as I know Brexit is mostly, most likely right around the corner. It's kind of annoying. He was supposed to come in during January, but when he did, I found out he wasn't getting a work permit. So I loaned him out to the to an Austria team where in 12 games, well, 14 games, he got eight goals and an average of 7.18 rating. You can see right there. But he's killing it in under 20 in the under 20 World Cup right now for Argentina. You'll see where is it? Uh, under 20 championship, one three basically three appearances, three goals, 7.5 rating. 
the dude is in, is going to be incredible. Oh, under twenty World Cup, two games, two goals, eight point two rating. So even better than the South American Under-20 Championship. But he's killing it right now. I'm hoping to loan him out again to a team where I might be able to better get him a work permit and then hopefully be available for the first team the season after this next one. But I have no clue what the future holds for this kid. I really want to bring him into the first team. I just can't seem to be do- I can't seem to do it right now without a work permit. So up to Max Romero was the summer of 2016. Out, let's do the outs first for 2016. Dejan Lovren to, the, to Spurs, 29 million with 39 million upwards. Tottenham came in hard for him, and with that kind of money, I had to give in. I didn't want to get rid of him. I know he's a good player, uh, at least in football manager, and I just had to give in. So 17 and 8, uh, 6.97. He actually not that great. I got better, uh, better CDs in the squad, so maybe it was good that I gave him up. Ragnar Klavan. I mean, you'll see a bunch of loans here, but Klavan is one that I was raked over the coals for this one by the, both the board and the fans. I thought he was an older player with one or two year contract. Kind of move him on and get what I could for him. But the fans really wanted to see him play. And you'll see he went to PSG. 21 appearances, 5 off the bench. 2 goals, 6 assists. Wow, 7.37 rating. Definitely one I guess I if I ever started up a Liverpool career mode again, I would keep this dude. Dejan Lovren was one that everyone wanted. It's not like I just wanted to get money for him. Klavan, I wanted to see what I could get for him, and it was 6.5 million, seven up, uh, upwards of seven, two PSG, like I said. But again, next time I would keep this dude around. But then we have, let's see, where's Ilori? To Aston Villa, 4.5 million, upwards to 4.8. There was just no chance he was going to play above those that were both in the team and those that were brought in. Just wasn't good enough for my team. But another one that actually the fans wondered what the heck I was doing when I sold him. And in real life, as Liverpool supporters, we wanted to see him succeed, but we knew he wasn't going to get into the team. So it was best that he was moved on. And it's kind of funny that the fans here were kept wondering what the hell I was doing. Let's get back to January transfers. Since I kind of overspent... In the summer, I really didn't need to bring anyone in, so I only brought two players in. Both are youngsters. Christopher Ayer from uh, Celtic, three and a half million. He was loaned back to the club, so we'll see how he's going to do. I know in previous football managers, this this is another beast. So he grows and he grows. And you'll see 25 appearances, uh, 9 off the bench, 7.31 rating, 2 goals, 13 assists. I mean, damn. He is definitely going to get into the team if he can keep that up. Uh, he'll probably start in the under-23s, get a couple games, cup games and things like that next season, but uh, it, we'll see how he does. But he's definitely going to get into the onto the first-team bench soon. Matthias Delight, I have no idea if I'm saying that right, from Ajax, 5.25 million up to 5.75. Came into the under-23 team mostly, but did okay when called upon in cup games. Needs another year or so of growth. Uh, he will be one that will get some game time next season, maybe stick to the under-23s for a bit longer than Oxford and Lemos, but we'll see. You know, only time will tell. So he only got one start, one off the bench, 6.9 rating. Not too bad. In January, we had no January outs. So that is that. However, for the summer of 2017, while the transfer season hasn't started yet, In this save, uh, this is shortly after the FA Cup win against West Brom. We do have some players that are coming in. Ryan Sessegnon, 11.5 million from Fulham. Tried like crazy to get this guy before Gaia came in so that he would be Moreno's backup, but he refused to come and wanted to stay with his now former club. So when the chance came up again, I grabbed him. He apparently has, I mean, three definite up to five star potential. He's going to grow to be an absolute beast. Uh, he's going to be better than Gaia. I'm, I have no doubt about that. Julian Green. In real life, this dude is insane. Uh, Bayern Wonder Kid is three to possibly four and a half to five stars. Uh, this kid has loads of potential and can't wait to see what he can do for us. And he, I picked him up on a free. I have no idea why Bayern would do that. They let the go- kid go for a free and now he's a Liverpool player come you know a month or two from now. Their loss, our gain. Borgia San Emeterio from Sevilla. Another free. Also with two and a half this time to, to four and a half to five star potential. Heard about this guy and he is another one that has loads. 
Again, not sure what the previous club was thinking about. I don't know what Sevilla was thinking about letting him go for free, but hey, we'll take him. And he can sit there as a backup to Klein as well as Tete. I mean, he's only 20 years old, so he can grow and grow and grow. Lucas Romero, another one that I have used in previous football managers. Absolutely terrific. Two and a half stars right now, up to three to five stars potential. I got him from Crucero in the Brazil League, 6.5 million. I knew I was going to look at offloading both Leva and Milner in the offseason, so I looked at Romero as kind of the good young player to fill those shoes and grow to become an even better player than both of those. And it, it looks like he's going to be that player that I look, looked out for. Diago Maia from Santos, also in the Brazilian League. He's another one that I wanted from the beginning, but circumstances wouldn't allow it. However, a few weeks before the 16-17 season ended, he was placed on the transfer list by Santos, so I scooped him up. 12.75 million. Can't wait to see this dude play. Another, I mean, look at that. Right now he's got three and a half star potential, upwards of four and a half to five stars. This this guy is going to be absolutely insane. I can't wait to see him in our team. So transfers are done. Next, let's look at our... Okay, so the EFL Cup. Uh, we got crushed. So to, in the EFL Cup, Capital One Cup or whatever it's called officially these days, we beat Petersburg 5-3 and we beat Middlesbrough 2-0. That brought us into the fourth round where we lost to Chelsea 3-1. Chelsea was just one of those teams we could not beat this year. I think we beat them once and then lost two or three times. So, oh well, that was a bust. Burnley kicked the crap out of West Ham 5-0. Premier League, we've already talked about this. Liverpool did the did win the league, finally. After how many, 20 years or so, we finally win the Prem and did it handily. 87 points to Chelsea's 77 in second. Man United and Arsenal tie with 74 to round out the top four. Man City come in fifth with 71 points and West Ham in sixth with 67 points. So Liverpool win the league, 26 wins, 9 draws, 3 losses, 82 goals for, 30 against, with a 52 differential, 87 points. It, absolutely fantastic season. Uh, there were a couple of, there were a handful of draws and losses that we could have done better with, but maybe next season we can we can work a little harder. FA Cup. As you can see, another 5-0 win. This time Liverpool over West Brom. I guess the FA Cup and the EFL Cup finals had a little tie there. 5-0 to each. But we pulled the double, won the FA Cup as well. Another competition we absolutely crushed it in. In the end, six matches, only gave up two goals. We started off with a 3-0 win over Bury, 5-0 over Stoke, 3-0 over Swansea, 1-0 over Man United. That was such a terrific game. Uh, it was so hard fought Man United and Liverpool games. I tied both league games during the season and this was just so sweet to beat them and not even an extra time but up till then what 5 8 9 10 11 0 in four games had not conceded anything until we got to newcastle where we beat them 3-2 in extra time and then finally the winners of the fa cup we kicked the crap out of west brom 5 minutes We started out the season using kind of a Christmas tree looking formation that worked for a bit but quickly stopped. So I found two new ones to take its place. The first, a 4-1-2-1-2 kind of tactic, absolutely did wonders. You'll see it here, I I kind of rotated it throughout the season constantly. So these aren't the best players that were there. But while it had its moments of full blown hair pulling, 9 times out of 10 it caused for quite a few matches LFC supporters aren't likely to forget anytime soon. Shots and shots on target skyrocketed to an average of 18 to 22 a game, if not more. But we also had a 4-3-3 DM that I would use from time to time, which also worked nicely. So I won the manager of the year, and boy does that feel good. Mignolet won in the Golden Gloves, got third place. Team of the year, Zaza, Ibra, Sanchez, Hazard, Paye... Shakiri, Willems, Otamendi, Otamendi, that's surprising, Zuma, and Klein. So Klein gets into the team of the year. This dude was absolutely incredible all season long. He fully deserved this award, and I can't see using anyone else in this spot next season but him. So you see, Real Madrid 
wins La Liga. Barcelona comes up second. Barcelona was in first the, most of the year. And then I guess in the last set of games, they just started to lose and tie, and Real Madrid just took over. But Luis Suarez, 26 goals, tops them all. I'm hoping to bring him in in a couple of years. We just need to get the money up for it. Uh, Ligue 1. PSG definitely wins by a handful. I mean, look at that, 96 to Bordeaux, 63. Toulouse got 63 as well. So PSG definitely is just winning him hands down. Where else? German First Division. Bayern, of course, wins. Bayern with 81. Again, another crushing over Leverkusen in second with 63 points and Dortmund with 63 as well. There's a lot of ties for either second and third or third or fourth. Uh, and then Red, Red Bull Leipzig comes in with 52. So it's you know kind of mirroring what's happening in real life, although Leipzig is in first. Serie A. Juventus with 91. Another crushing. AC Milan with only 76. Napoli rings out the top three. Inter and Udinese, 59. The biggest news of this season is Guardiola was sacked. He is now a head coach missing in action. Uh, Let's see. He was fired in 2017 as head coach in Man City. uh, And it was not even at the end of the season. They fell to fifth and he was gone three-fourths of the way through the season. Talk about a shocker. What does the future hold for Liverpool and this save? To be honest, I haven't figured out what I want to do next. I have a few other ideas in mind for other saves, so I'm not sure what I need to do with this one. This was kind of a test save to figure out how the game works post-beta. Do I start over with LFC and learn from the lessons outlined before? Do I start another save and keep this one on the back burner? Who knows? But if I did continue with this save, my current thoughts are to sell Moreno, Sacco, Lucas, Lalana, and Milner. That would free up space for Matip to gain more first-team experience as well as Oxford and Lemos. John will hold down the DM role and rotate out with Maya and Romero. Hendo will take over that midfield spot. Lalana didn't get much time this season, mostly due to injury, but when he was on, there were other players better than him on the pitch. So maybe I'll take the money from the sale above as well as the 43 million euros given for winning the league and whatever else given as a transfer kitty on some men up front. Do I sell Sturridge? Injured a lot, didn't perform all that well when called upon. Do I get another winger? Who knows? Only time will tell if I continue. Well, that does it for this save, at least for the time being. If I continue, I'm sure you'll be first to know. Hope you'd enjoyed the LFC season in review. Take care, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Enjoy!